couple of years with like six or seven people who can actually go through a practice. But now it feels good to be able just to get through Indy and go through the team periods and not be winded because we only have six people. What do you see as the benefits of the cross training among the offensive line? Because in the future, we never know what's going to happen. And we can't just expect everybody to be healthy and just all be set in one position. So to be prepared to win games, we all have to be able to cross train and just be able to be kind of like prepared for all situations without even like having to get in that situation yet. So it's good that we can practice at all positions. Does it help with the concept of understanding what everybody's position is? Once you learn another position and you can learn your own position that you're originally at, you can understand the full offense better. Marcus, the last couple weeks at camp, what, what percentage of time would you say that, that Coach Cheney has spent with the offensive line specifically? He jumps around from room to room, and I feel that's how offensive coordinator should be, but he does poke his head in from time to time. From the outside looking in, it seems like he's taken a, a big interest in the offensive line, at least in the individual periods when we're out there. I mean, does that send a message? That shows he just cares, and you can just tell, like, if there's – now, like we actually have a lot more bodies, so Coach Fran might need some help, and they might he might want to focus on guards one day. Coach Chain wants to focus on the tackles, might flip flop. It's just a good situation. Just what kind of differences have you seen with the offense with Coach Chaney coming in in the spring? Just consistency and being able to have a coordinator throughout the spring, and then have him in camp. It just feels good to just stay in a solidified offense. Marcus, what's that transition been like to be just in attack mode at offensive line you know, towards those D linemen and, and, and the defense as opposed to maybe at times in the past that you've blocked with a little bit more passive and, and a different style blocking? Mm -hmm. Well, to answer that, honestly, that's just how we were playing. Mm -hmm. We just weren't playing as aggressive. It has nothing to do with the coaches. It was just the mentality of the players, and I feel like that's changed a lot. Just this offense in general, what makes y'all confident y'all can be more productive as an entire unit this year? The consistency we've tried to hold throughout practice, that's really been the main thing we've been focusing on. No matter what position you're at, just being consistent and knowing what you're doing. But Jeremy said you guys are going to be moving around, you know, even in week one, do you expect to play both left and right tackle? I you have to expect everything with Coach Pruitt because he really just, he's worried about the future and anything can happen. We've seen the mass amount of injuries with our offensive line here, so we might as well be prepared for it. How does that impact your preparation though when you don't have like a set five working together with y'all mixing and matching? Does it have any impact? Or? No, I don't think it does. Right, what, what did you weigh on Thanksgiving versus now? Thanksgiving, probably like 291. And that was 321 this morning. How do you do that? How do you pull 30 pounds and then all season? What was the strategy? Trusting Coach Fitz. He's been there. He's done that. Trusting Rachel. She's been with national championship teams. Just following them, just trusting them. What are they kind of telling you in terms of, hey, here's the plan for the next six, seven months? Lifting and eating consistently and extra lifts after practice, extra meals at night. And just constantly doing the same thing and maintaining the same routine and then switching it up every once in a while. What are, what are good calories? <laughs> What's in those that put on weight? It's not bad. But. Honestly, all calories can help you. It's just how you train within, how you develop it, and keep stretching and keep lifting and keep running at the same time. And just continuous bod pods and make sure you're putting on the right weight. Is there a meal that you got tired of during this process? Mm -hmm. Not really. <laughs> so, what was your diet like, though? A lot of PBJs, a lot of just constant chicken breasts and just. Whatever Rachel really could develop for me from what Smokey's had downstairs, she just constantly had me like write it down and just keep eating, keep a food journal, and just continuing just to keep doing it over and over and over again. So like how many PBMJs per week or how many chicken breasts per week would you eat? At first, ridiculous, but now it's just been <laughs> normal eating because I've maintained it well throughout camp, so it's pretty normal. But eating. ridiculous is like Probably like 12 or 13 PBMJs per you week. Got, yeah. When you got out of high school, did you ever think you would wait for I knew I could hold it on my frame because a lot of my friends that I've known that went off to college were able to put on weight. So I knew it would take a process, but then it didn't help having completely different strength staffs every other year and then different nutritionists and not having nutritionists. So it was good just to have a solidified group of staff around me. And so how much has it helped to have the same strength coach back to back years? That means a lot. Honestly, that's probably the big difference. They know our weights. They know our strengths and our weaknesses. They know how our bodies develop. They know what works for us, so it's been helpful. Is 320 the target, or where are you going? I passed my target a long time ago. <laughs> so now that I've like been moving well with it, yeah. I've just been trying to maintain. So they just kind of watch you and say, OK, well, now we see the ability to slow down. Is it sort of a judgment call as you go along, basically? Is that how that works? I was originally in Breakfast Club, and then I came back, and then I was like 315. What is Breakfast Club? 
where you have to wake up early every day if you're not making weight or you're overweight. So then I was underweight, then I came back and I was right at my weight. So then they were just like fluctuating because I know they didn't want me to say like to lose weight and then I lose all my weight again. So they're just maintaining. What's the difference in how you feel now, 320 versus how you're feeling last Thanksgiving, 290 when you're on the field? I feel a lot more solid. The hits don't hurt as bad. But I know when I was younger, the game, I just felt way more like sore after games, practice and everything. Now I just feel like it's just normal practice. Do you still feel like you have the, you know, kind of agility, mobility that made you kind of a, a prospect to begin with mm -hmm. at your, at your, in your frame? Yeah, it's changed throughout the offenses, but yeah, nothing's changed really. And as, you, as a guy who's a veteran who started, who's played a lot, you know, what, how much motivation did you get when you know, Tennessee signed two of the top high school offensive tackles in the country last year? Is that, is that even registered with you? No, not really. It's just more people to bring in just to continue to develop under me because my time here isn't forever. So this university is going to continue without me. So it's just great. And what do you see from Moyne and, and Cornell? They're both doing well. They're just trusting Coach Chaney and Coach Friend and just leaning on the older guys. And we're just trying to bring them along. Mark, you talked about the mentality that this that this offensive line has changed a little bit, specifically with you. Can you see a difference in, in the way you play and how aggressive you are compared to a year ago? I'm just tired of losing. It's really <laughs> embarrassing to go out there and just everybody just blaming it on us and just it usually is our fault most of the time. So it's just just want to make a difference. Just don't want to be that whole excuse of why we're losing, why this university is falling apart. So. Is the whole offensive line kind of taking on that mentality, you think? Has it kind of like been motivation for you guys this offseason just to kind of change that narrative? Everybody doesn't say it, but they all feel it in the back of their head because it's just – it's kind of like anger because, like, like, a lot of the negativity around this school and, like, the football team has been on us, so it's time to change it. You said for today, obviously, your weight. I we got a lot of questions about that again today. You didn't feel like you were actually ready in hindsight to play when you were a freshman. Mm -hmm. you know, now that you're kind of competing and, and working alongside two other freshmen, do you feel like that they're actually going to be ready to play, you know, if, if you guys are going to count on them this season? Yeah, they were much farther than I was. I was playing against Jonathan Allen at like 250, so <laughs> they're way farther ahead in their development. So, yeah. Marcus, what kind of looks are you getting from the defensive line? What do you see from them, improvements, different – different? Uh, uh, this is different in the past in terms of the D-line you've gone up against? It's a Coach Pruitt defense, so anytime you have a Coach Pruitt defense, if you're playing against him, he's your head coach, it's going to be an aggressive defense. It's always attacking to the point of attack. You mentioned the hits not hurting as much and things like that. Is that the main place you see the weight kind of show up, or where do you kind of feel it the most? Is it, is it helping the run game? Or? That's the best feeling, honestly, because going through a game, going against a 320-pound four-eye, just it changes the game now, now that I'm also for 320. Mm -hmm. Marcus, 